Welcome to another episode where I talk about how alignment hunts radio frequency interference. I felt like this was a good opportunity to show you the products that we use. This is the Radar Engineers 242. I've had it about 10 years. This is the Radar Engineers 243 probably been here one year and then I have my old AM radio that I use and when I'm outside of the vehicle both radios right now are set at 146.8 megahertz that's my patrol frequency that I drive with inside my truck I have a console where this radio sets I have two whips mounted to the top of the truck and I can use both receivers at the same time All right, here's the 242 mounted on the carrier. This is the way I go down the highway. Okay, right now it's set on 799, so it doesn't scream. Okay, we're gonna move it to 450. You see how I pegged it? Okay, my choices are to reduce the gain. Now I'm going to go up in frequency or 300. You see how it takes to, to the gain to bring it down to an acceptable level. Now I'm to 144. So that's 146.8 on the truck. So when I see something like that, I just start walking my way up. 300, 450, full gain. Run up to 799, if I'm still driving. And with 799, looks like that. I just stick my hand out of the truck and the pole that I'm closest to is the pole that has the noise on it. Pretty effective. We were able to find a surge arrester that was making a lot of noise and we brought it down, retired it, and brought it to a test field, remote test field that we have. And we have it mounted so that it can be energized with primary voltage and I can make noise come and go at will. And it's, it's a great way to show how the noise the radio frequency interference comes into these two different receivers. Right now, they have pretty lousy rubber duck antennas. I wouldn't use that in a normal patrol. I have a Yagi right here that I usually use if I'm walking, and then the whips serve me as I drive. The rubber ducks will do just fine here. I'm probably 200 foot away from the arrester. So stay with me, and what we'll do is we'll go over and we'll energize the arrestor, then come back and we'll talk about the signature that these two different receivers have, and hear the noise that's coming from all three, the 242, the 243, and the AM radio. the camera running next to the two receivers when I closed that fuse serving the arrestor you heard these two radios sound off both were at 146.8 both are pegged so right now I have the volume turned all the way down on each receiver both are still running so let's run through the options here all right, this is the old trusty Radar Engineers 242 set at 146.8. That'd be my patrol frequency. So now we'll move it up, and you can see I'm on full gain, full gain, sync, gain, no amp, 146.8. Now we're going to move it up to 300 preset, still pegged. 
bring it up to 450. The 200 foot puts a little hamper on it. We did some testing on this and found that at about a half a mile away, I couldn't detect it with my whip antennas. So the 242 can store that picture, I have a light screen, I can bring the amp on. I usually run with the amp off unless I'm really having trouble. This will rotate the frequencies. Filter on and off. So I like the 240. It's done a good job for me. This is the Radar Engineer's 243. Still set at 146.8. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six presets. Right now, I'm set at the 146.8. The 144 I use when I bring up my Yagi antenna, three and a half, 3.5 megahertz. We'll run through this, 146.8. My next preset is 330. Next one is 449. And then the last one is 849. So let's run down and see what we can do here. The last one was 449. Now we're going to go the other way. We'll go back to 330. 449 still peg. So a lot of things factor in, but we're going to move to 849 and I'm going to show you the menu. We have the receiver, spec deep display which actually draws a graph across the screen. I think it's cute, but I have it. I don't use it. Okay. These are the settings that they offer you. How wide is the span? I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to go to frequency presets. Here you can see the presets that I have programmed. And then this button will actually push saved videos, traces and videos from internal memory out to a USB. USB. Let's close that and let's go to this side. Okay, get back to a noise. We can split screen. I can save that shot save video. Right now I'm saving this 10 seconds to the internal memory of this device. Come right over here to the USB port and you can move it to a dangle or you can extract it from the device itself to your computer. I've sent those before. Uh, the last file I sent showed exactly what was on the screen, all the all the data, and uh, the spikes as it was displayed here. And internal, our server's large enough, but it only let the sound go through on emails. It wouldn't let the video go through. It was too big. So usually what I do is I take those and put them on YouTube and then send the link, the YouTube link. So let's do this. 350, 14.4, we're gonna back the gang down until we're off of 100. Once it hits 100, it's worthless, okay? Now you can start comparing. Okay, frequency to frequency. There's the 144 up there. Let me go down here to 449. Okay. 
So lots of features. I'm sure Fred with the radar engineers can probably walk you through it a lot better than I can. But uh, if I would grown up with the 243, I probably would be have moved along faster. The 242 did a great job for me. So what we'll do now is we'll take a break. I'm going to connect the Yagi antenna and then we'll see how it does. All right, the wind's really starting to come up. I've got the 144 Yagi antenna connected to the radar engineer's 243. So we're at 849, you're not gonna get anything. And what I'm gonna do is, you can see the front end right here, okay? And it has properties of a Yagi antenna where we see in the front, but we see a little bit in the back. And the manufacturer's actually tried to show you that right here. So let's go to 144. Take our gain down. Right now I'm pointed at that pole. Go 90 degrees. That's 90 degrees to the east. There's 90 degrees to the west. We come back and point at the pole, and you can see how I went to peg. So I do a lot of hunting with this Yagi antenna. So that's the 243. This is the 242. Let's take a look real quick and see what my AM does. So if I was patrolling, usually I, I usually use 5.30 AM or 17.10, and being off station, it takes less static to bring it into the radio. If I'm on a radio station, uh, this noise has to be significant to cover up the power of that radio station. Thank you for spending the time with me. Hopefully you got something out of it. I wanted to show the 242 and the 243 and uh, now with the wind blowing 20 miles an hour, hopefully I can get over there and get that fuse barrel open and get that arrestor de-energized so thanks for spending the time with me and i'll see you next time that we want to talk about radio frequency interference